Thank you so much for joining us this week. So we did this interview on the second level of Ottawa Architecture's installation on Nui Blanche. Therefore, it will be just a tad bit windy. I apologize for that, but it's a very good interview that I'm sure you're going to love. We will break uh, halfway like we usually do to get a talk from Jen from Foodie Prints to tell us about Riptoberfest, the Ottawa Food Truck Rally, and a taste of the Italian Harvest uh, Week at her wine at uh, Sala San Marco. And as always, we're at the end of the show, we talk about special events coming on this week. So I hope you enjoy the show. All right, thank you so much for joining us on another award-eligible edition of Lunch Out Loud Ottawa. My name is Nick Wachuski. And I'm Andrew Miller. And of course, we're the podcast that talks to the people, places, events that make this city the incredible city that it is. And before we get to our very special guests, Sarah and Nico, why don't we check this out? Hi, this is Ken from Four Stroke. And I'm Brad from Four Stroke. And right now you're listening to Lunch Out Loud. Four Stroke is playing the House of Targ on Wednesday, October 1st uh, with Slumlord as their tour kickoff. And uh, Ain't No Grave is also playing as well. Uh, anyhow, uh, if you want to know something really important about Four Stroke, my favorite pie is homemade moose pie made from jarred moose from Newfoundland. And my favorite homemade pie is pumpkin pie Halloween, everybody. And... Uh, of course, country style. All right. Anyhow, uh, thanks for listening to uh, Lunch Out Loud. Right, thank you so much. That was excellent. So right now we are doing this interview on Saturday because we have Sarah Gelbard here who is uh, very heavily involved with architecture in Ottawa, but unfortunately she is doing her PhD in Montreal, so she's not here throughout the weeks. So we're very happy uh, to have her here. So we're here Saturday outside the mile, the metropolis. Metropo Metropolitan. Metropolitan. <laughs> The and the milestones, yeah. on Sussex Street, where Ottawa Architecture Week has a uh, has a uh, outside like installation, a installation yeah. here for Nuit Blanche. Yeah. So we're on the second floor of a uh, on the campground. installation. We're at, like a bit of a campground. There's a canoe. Yeah. Uh, Andrew's right beside the campfire. We got a tent <laughs> on here. So. <laughs> One Very of our nice. most, and we're rocking here, so hopefully... Uh, <laughs> hopefully these scaffolds hold. <laughs> hopefully they don't feel tall. But a lot, a lot of people are uh, coming by and looking, so hopefully they see the big sign of... You, you have a perfect spot here to promote oh, it's, Ottawa it's architecture yeah. spot. Yeah. And Nuit Blanche was really pushing for us to have this spot as well. Oh, really? Yeah, because, I mean, it's a multi-level installation, and you can see that uh, the plaza, has, there are different levels to the plaza, right? So yeah. there's, there's good vantage points to see the different the different uh, levels of scaffolding. So Absolutely. They were really interested in having us install it here. And how long is this going to be up for? This, just tonight. Oh, okay. And then it'll be up for the week of architecture week. Oh, so, yeah, at our so own. you have to take it all down and then take move it, it all. <laughs> yes. yes. Take oh, us well. down at four in the morning. You'll be, you'll, will you be here till four in the morning? Oh, absolutely. Are yeah. you sleeping in one of these? Uh, I'll probably take a little nap. Take yeah, a little nap. Good. 
Sarah, will you be here as well? I'm, I'm unfortunately not going to be here tonight, but <laughs> uh, I, I, I'll, I'll check in. Maybe I'll come by with donuts or something at 2 o'clock in the morning. I suppose somebody kind of has to be here to make sure, uh, you know, once the night crowd is out that people well, yeah. don't start climbing well, all that's over right. us, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we're not allowed to have people inhabiting the different levels. So. Yeah. How, was it a big hassle? Did you have to go through the city to, to be able yeah, to put this up, actually, obviously? There, there had to be six different groups to approve wow. having this built here. Who are the groups? So we had, uh, there was, I don't know all of them. So the, <laughs> the NCC dealt with all of that for us. Okay. So oh, we had uh, like the condo board, for example, the city, the NCC, all these different different people. And uh, actually, just before you guys got here, we had a Harper's Motorcade come through. Yeah. And uh, so they were a little suspicious of what was going on. And we had to, so they had to go through the tents. And, and <laughs> How long did that take for them going through your tents? Minutes. <laughs> 15 minutes. Oh, wow. <laughs> Right it's a very right. thorough time. It was very thorough. <laughs> I guess they got to be careful. You had to contact me, Blanche. All right, so we're here. We're uh, going to be talking about Ottawa Architecture Week, which will, this will be the fourth edition. Uh, actually, it's almost. It's been going on for over 25 years. 25 years. Yeah. Wow, that was a so. little off. <laughs> <laughs> it well, kind of comes in and out, and the last four years maybe counts as kind of a, a, a recognizable group. A know. resurgence. A resurgence, if you will. Yeah. So uh, first, we like to get to know our guests when we're we're talking. About it. Uh, Nico, uh, you came to. How long have you been in Ottawa? Uh, I was born in Ottawa. Okay, so I've been here my whole life. Three, right three years. Yeah, uh, I went to school here at Carleton. Uh, did my undergrad and masters at, Car- at the School of Architecture at Carleton, and I've been in the city ever since. Was, how's, how's Carleton's uh, architecture program in comparison to uh, other schools? Uh, is it I mean, fairly well recognized? Or? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it scores pretty highly in the, the yeah. rankings. It kind of jockeys for, for top positions. So. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Where do a lot of uh, graduates from Carleton School of Architecture uh, end up going? Do they end up staying Toronto. in Ottawa? A lot of Toronto? <laughs> Montreal, Vancouver, big cities. There's a lot of people who go back to their hometowns as well. And yeah. Or uh, some international students who, who go back to wherever they came from. But, yeah. Yeah. Bring a little bit of Ottawa with them, hopefully. <laughs> Why do you think they're going to Toronto, Montreal, and Vancouver as opposed to uh, Ottawa? A lot of there's probably I would say there are more opportunities, bigger cities, more work, more friends. Uh, but again, some of it is just going home. Um, so uh, there's there are a lot of different factors. Have you seen a resurgence in uh, of architecture students staying in Ottawa and start going, we don't need to join another firm, we can start something here? Well, I'm, I'm pretty surprised, I think, that lot, how many people have stayed. Because I always, I always, under, always was under the assumption that people will all leave. And in the last few years, I, you know, I don't know if you guys know Yao Lab, that Sarah's involved with. Like, yeah, we're going to talk invo- about Yao Lab. Okay, so being involved with them and seeing how many people actually are still around and trying to make it work is exciting. So. And I guess that's it, is just trying to pr- create a, a, sen- a, ta- a place where we actually connect with each other, is you almost don't know who stays around sometimes, because you all kind of go off to do your own thing, and you lose contact, and you realize, oh, wait, that person's working down the street for me. Or, that's kind of what the yeah, is kind of doing. We'll talk about yeah. that in just a moment. But, uh, Nico, I've, okay, so we uh, usually talk about favorite restaurants or something. We'll talk about favorite buildings for uh, for our architect for you guys in architecture. What are some of your favorite buildings here? Uh, well, the School of Architecture is, of course, a favorite of mine. A lot of people don't really like it, but um, that's that's a big a big one for me. And where is that located? That's at Carleton University. Oh, right, okay. Right yeah. beside the university center. Yeah. Oh, okay, gotcha. I'm a big I'm a big fan of the uh, Aga Khan building further down Sussex. Yeah. Uh, again, like uh, that 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 was done by a pretty well-known Japanese architect, and I don't think a lot of people in the city really uh, realize how important of a building it is and how great of a building it is, so I'm, I mean, I'm really excited that that's here. I like uh, that for Doors Open Ottawa I visited there. Yeah, yeah, nice. yeah, yeah. Oh, cool. Uh, so that's, a, that's another great one. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of a lot of the, the like brutalist 60s era stuff, so the, the new train station is, I think is really great. Yeah. Uh, some of the inst- some of the like pavilion type things at uh, Hogsback Park I really like. So there are a lot of, I mean, Ottawa's not a hotbed for architecture, but there are a lot of really great. No, ones. are we traditionally seen as kind of uh, a boring, boring, if you will, with our architecture here in town? Yeah, yes. Yeah, we are, right? Eh? <laughs> Absolutely. And do, you, do, you, do we think that's going to change anytime, or uh, is it hard to pass through the city, though, uh, all the way to... I mean, I, I don't know about you, Sarah, but I've noticed a lot more people wanting great things here. Yes. So it seems to be something people want, so hopefully maybe that... 
Yeah, brings about okay. change. Dealing with Yeah Labs and or like a lot of your articles and stuff, have you found that it's too much red tape here? Why? Why is there the lack of uh, exciting architecture here as opposed to other places in Canada? Well, I think it's kind of reflective of Ottawa in general, just the sort of conservative side of it yeah. as well. Of, you know, not, nobody wants to invest in big city urban projects. Nobody, or there, there's a, a tentativeness around it. I won't say people don't want to. It's just uh, trying to, to make the case that that's a, a good place to put the money. And also sometimes the misperception of how much good architecture costs, that it doesn't necessarily cost that much more than what is going up, but there's this illusion that it does and people are afraid of looking like they've spent too much money. Ah, That's gotcha. right. It's troublesome. Uh, that recently the NCC unveiled the final plans, I guess, for the uh, the Holocaust Museum, or the Memorial. And so that's that kind of looks uh, kind of cool. That should be pretty interesting when that starts building. Yeah, there's been a lot of recent projects that are, are getting approved that are, are showing a, a hint towards people wanting Ottawa to, to kind of represent itself as a capital city. And I, I think Ottawa in general over its history kind of goes through these waves of, you know, wanting to create an identity and recognizing architecture is a great way to do that. What are some of the other projects that uh, that people might not know of? Uh, the windmill development of is course. pretty exciting. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. And, the Don Tarlands. Uh, yeah. And, you know, the, everything surrounding the LRT, a uh, number of neighborhood developments that are going up around the stations and plans to, to really make, integrate that into the city and make the most use of it once it's once it's completed and it's kind of life when they're on. Yeah, that's right. And even like these more recent conversations about a new library and stuff like this, I think people people are excited about this. For sure. Like Arts Court is being redeveloped, so... Yeah. They're, they're what are your thoughts on the, uh, the new... Um, Oh, convention, convention center. center. There you go. Oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> you, you, you've maybe picked one that we don't like to comment on. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it's hard because you don't want to. You want to be encouraging of projects, and so personal taste maybe comes to a point where it's like, yeah. this is not what I would have chosen. But you also yeah. don't want to discourage, you know, the attempt to bring yeah. Yeah. Archi architectural statements. And, uh, and there's, I mean, I think there's something really positive about the project, and that's got people talking about architecture. And it's, I mean, it's exciting just to have that at least. Yeah. And there's a really great, the, the landscaping that goes out into the canal is really a great part of the project, yeah. too. That kind of public space it creates in front of the building is yeah. a really nice contribution to the city. Yeah, yeah that's for sure. Fun. I like that at Lansdowne, too. There's a lot of public space there. So. Well, what are some of your some of your favorite buildings then in uh, Ottawa? Uh, so the train station is also kind of, uh, I think Nico and I share kind of a, a mid-century uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. fetish there. Okay. But um, that one, uh, there's also quite a, the, the main library, I think it is actually a really interesting piece of work that's maybe had some unfortunate renovations over the year, but uh, it is pretty interesting. Um, so you don't want them to tear it down? No, I don't want them to tear okay. it down. <laughs> you know, whether or not it fulfills its need as a, a modern or a contemporary library is maybe debatable, but I think it has a, it, a function could be found for it, and I think it's an important part of our history that we, we can't yeah. We seem to look, gloss over the importance of anything that's too close to us, so we kind of have a tendency to destroy things and then 50 years later go, oh wait, yeah. that was actually a really good piece of work. We should yeah. have tried to protect it. So now, do you find that uh, kind of hard, I guess, in your heart to see as the city's growing and intensifying? Do you find it difficult where you have, obviously there's older buildings that are going to have to come down for new ones to come up. What are, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, I think that's part of the life of a city. So there is it, it's hard. it's a very hard job to decide which old buildings are the ones worth preserving and you can't preserve just because it's old doesn't mean it's worth preserving mm -hmm. so to have that you know critical analysis and you know make the decision of what's important what's what the city needs and sometimes that has a cost sometimes it's unfortunate but there's also the making sure that you do protect the heritage and that doesn't just mean anything built in the late 1800s early 1900s like heritage continues and we need yeah. to make sure that that yeah, is all absolutely. preserved in at least some you know key examples do you know do we have stricter heritage rules than other cities do you know i don't know how we compare but uh, i suspect we're probably pretty much on par for a canadian yeah now now sir you run uh, do you uh, Yao Lab, can you tell us a bit about what Yao Lab is for any listeners that are interested in architecture or want to be more involved 
with architecture in Ottawa? Yeah, absolutely. So Yale Lab started off mostly as kind of a, a group of uh, recent graduates from Carleton. Um,